Hogwarts Legacy should be cancelled. Just look at all these people suffering because you have to play a game with wands and flying cars. Hogwarts Legacy should be cancelled. I'm just going to say, as a trans woman, if I see you buying the game, I'm just going to buy it. I'm not here to buy it. And that is not an opinion, it's a fact. J.K. Rowling, both through the words she says and direct financial contributions, is signal boosting and enabling multiple groups and individuals who are actively pushing for the stripping away and restricting of rights of trans people, especially in the UK right now. And it's working. Okay, okay, I'm obviously joking. Seriously, the internet has gone a mental and berserk over a game that has nothing to do with J.K. Rowling. For a quick summary, J.K. Rowling, the person that made the Harry Potter books, she may not like trans people. And for some weird reason, this seemed to upset every trans person in the universe. But all JK did was make the characters, of course. And Hogwarts. And the spells. Okay, maybe she had a bit to do with why the game was made. Let's be honest, the majority of people even side with JK Rowling in the first place. Totally not me. I was very cautious about this game for reasons I'm about to say. But you don't see me commenting everywhere trying to get this game destroyed. Well, enough of those idiots. For a start, the game was made by the same people that did a game I was very excited about. Gotham Knights. And let's just see how that turned out. Went from being this very hyped game, adding in co-op, and the combat looked on the same level, if not higher, than the other Arkham games. And this was all the way back in 2020. But, of course, the game got delayed... And then delayed. Oh, and guess what? Another delay. It was removed from all of the older consoles. Rest in peace, those people. 30 FPS was only allowed, which is just unacceptable for a next-gen game. Only being able to play on about 22 FPS. Then the gameplay released. It looked so good. Like, amazing. Best gameplay I've ever seen in my life. I'm obviously being sarcastic. I don't know why they thought of showing this gameplay. The game had absolutely terrible combat, boring missions, and it was very grindy. Also, the people that are making this game have not made anything like this before. I think the closest thing they have made to this is probably Cars 3. And look, I'm not hating on Cars 3, but this is an open world Hogwarts game. This is not a driving game made by Disney. So when I'm looking at the gameplay and there's many bugs, glitches, FPS drops like mental... But that's understandable on the next gen. I wonder how polished this game actually is going to be. As many of the reviews are saying as well, the game has many glitches. So I'm not in the minority for that. And that is honestly where I saw Hogwarts Legacy going. But I kept my hopes up. And yes, I'm not one of those people straight up begging for a multiplayer mode. Although that would be a lot of fun. And expand the life cycle of this game. I was just very sceptical. The combat also reminded me a ton of a game called Marvel's Avengers, another fantastically made game. Constantly spamming buttons that do little to no damage until you get one of your many power-ups and also fighting the same bosses. The amount of trolls and spiders I have seen is insane. Spell looks fun at first until you realise you can literally one-shot every boss in the game making it pointless to search chests and improve more skills. When you get that, the game is literally over. Keep in mind, I have still not played this game. I bought Elden Ring instead. But this does not mean that I think Hogwarts Legacy is a bad game. I just think it has a lot of problems that will get players very bored quite easily. But there are its positives. The game looks incredible. I was shocked when I saw actual gameplay. And not just a render from a trailer. Yes, Call of Duty, I'm speaking to you. The world looks amazing. Even though there isn't a ton to explore, except grass mountains some more grass a couple mountains probably some more grass and a couple houses you still get places such as hogwarts which is quite good how much it looks like you can explore along with the many skills you can unlock to upgrade your character and you can also get a ton of spells we already know what spell most people are going to be using and i guess you can collect fantastic beasts too no one like those films though Another cool part of this game is the crafting and the school lessons. They might get repetitive as well, but it's cool having that interaction between escaping to the open world and staying in Hogwarts. And it actually gives you a reason to continue staying there, instead of not flying around on some... I don't even know what that creature's called. I gotta be honest, I don't know how they are still advertising this game for Nintendo Switch. 
if it can barely handle 60 FPS on next gen, I don't know what's going to happen to the Switch. Someone's going to buy it, it's going to blow up instantly. You're going to be getting 2 FPS on that thing. And that's me being generous, with the smoke coming out of the top. There's no way it could possibly be real. Unless you're running it at 480p and 10 FPS, it will not work on a Nintendo Switch. I'm sorry for all those Switch users out there that have already pre-ordered. You might want to get your money back before they rob you. The character customization as well looks pretty good. I wish there were more options, like you could actually make it look like yourself. I saw Hollow making his character. I gotta say it looks nothing like him. It just feels like the game is very repetitive, just spamming the same button. Oh, I get my spell. Avada coming up. And then you kill another spider, another spider, you fly somewhere else, you fly somewhere else. But if you are a massive fan of the Harry Potter books and films, and you actually don't mind JK Rowling and don't want to kill her, and don't want to do an Instagram post where you get hated everywhere, who also had nothing to do with the game, maybe give this a go. I'm still too sceptical with the gameplay, but if you like what you see and you have 70 pounds, 70 pounds? Seriously, 70 pounds? Okay, that is a lot for this. I've got to say, my favourite part of this game has got to be that collector's edition thing they released. It's sold out basically everywhere. And you get great things with it. You know, you get a plastic wand and a book. And the wand can float. Like, seriously, magic in real life? Oh, the, the wand can only float half a centimetre above the book. And it, and it costs about £500. I'd probably advise not buying that. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe. And leave a like on the video for more.